Okay, so okay, so let's let's continue our discussion. Uh, we are we are discussing basic building blocks or components of a uh, microwave system. So the first device uh, we started to discuss is directional coupler last week. So uh, let's continue our discussion on this basic important devices, both active and passive devices we used in uh, we used in the, uh, microwave systems. So, as we have discussed uh, last class, directional coupler is a four port device. Uh, So, so this is uh, what you have seen. This video is a directional coupler. As we have discussed, directional coupler has four ports. So this input port, as you can see here, uh, this cable is connected to input port. Uh, then uh, signal transmitted directly. Here we have the output port, or what you call it, direct port. Uh, to show you what is inside, uh, look here. So it's a directional coupler with. So as you can see inside, there is a main direct transmission line from port one to port two. Uh, so, so directional coupler, how many ports we have discussed? Four ports. Uh, so here, the signal so from the source, from microwave cells, connected to the input port, so signal will be transmitted directly to output port here. But there are two ports here, as you can see. What are these two ports? Uh, coupled port, port number three, and uh, isolated port, port number four. So when the signal transmitted directly from port one to port two, by coupling, small power goes to the coupling port. Okay, it goes to the coupling port. How much power? Uh, look this. This cable may go to the uh, uh, power meter or spectrum analyzer or any other monitoring device uh, because signal is still transmitted directly but small amount of power sampled and go to port number three. So port number one here, port number two here, port number three and port number four. So how many, how much power coupled here at port number three? We call it coupled ports, right? If you remember, uh, we call this coupled ports. So okay, so. Uh, directional coupler has four ports. Uh, this is the main line. This is the another uh, coupled line. So uh, when you transmit the signal from uh, port one, port two, uh, this line very close to each other. 
uh, so this is port 4 isolated port and port 3 coupled port right so signal transmitted uh, directly to output and small amount of power is sampled to port number 3 coupled port how much is that the equation c is equal to tail log of tail log of compare p1 with uh, p3 okay so this is what we call it coupling coupling so c gives you, gives us compares how much power we apply at port 1 input port how much power sampled goes to coupling port uh, p3 okay another important uh, another important point we have discussed uh, last time is there is another port here as you can see we call it isolated port so we are expecting this coupler to sample if signal comes from this direction input is this direction uh, signal transmit directly but small amount of power coupled and go to port number c this port must be isolated no coupling in the port number four only we get coupling here if you get signal from this side if this is input because directional coupler is uh, bi-directional you can apply input from here this side or this side so if you apply input from this side this is input port this direct port coupled port isolated port now what will happen if input comes from this side this will be now input the opposite right this will be output direct now this will be coupled and this will be isolated that's why we have uh, port 3 and port 4 now as you can see here input cable connected to port number one so if you apply let's say 10 milliwatt signal will be transmitted directly let's say 9 milliwatt uh, the 1 milliwatt power sampled coupled to the port number c right how much power we sample depends on what c c is equal to tail log of p1 divided by p3 c this coupler, when you buy a coupler on the specification, you will see C. It can be 10 dB coupler, it can be 20 dB coupler, and so on. So what, what does it mean by C coupling? It indicates how much power is coupled or sampled to port number three, the coupled port. Okay. Uh, so but uh, but uh, due to design imperfection, couplers are not uh, a perfect device. So what will happen? Uh, small amount of power uh, sampled and go to the wrong direction in the P4. So look here. This port is called isolated port. Right, isolated uh, port. Uh, port number three, we call it coupled port. All right, coupled port. Port number two, output or direct port. Uh, it's called direct port. Uh, port number one is our input port here. Okay, so when you apply uh, microwave signal here. Uh, this microwave signal transmits directly through this transmission line. We call it main transmission line. And a small amount of power go to the uh, another transmission line. We call it coupled line. This line is called uh, coupled, uh, coupled line. But this coupled signal must go to only to P3. Right? The amount of power go in the wrong direction. Uh, must be zero. That's why we call this device directional. Why we call it directional? Because the couple signal must go only to, uh, only to look here. So if you, if you connect your input cable here, uh, signal will be transmitted directly. 
and uh, here you see port uh, three output couple port small amount of power go in this direction sampled but uh, here you see this port before is terminated it's closed we, we are not using it but a small amount of power still go in the wrong direction we call that isolated port so how much how much power go in the wrong direction is given by what is given by uh, what we call it directivity okay what you call it directivity so that what's directivity means uh, directivity d is 10 log of p3 what's p3 power go in the wrong in the correct direction sampled and go to port 3 uh, divided by p4 power go in the wrong direction that's factor is called directivity so when you buy a directional coupler we have to know c value and d value c tells us how much power samples from the main transmission to the coupled line d indicates quality how much power sampled or coupled and transmitted in the wrong direction is determined by the value of d uh, okay so Today, let's uh, continue our discussion on directional coupler. So let's, uh, sorry, in another device, today we'll see two more devices. Uh, uh, the next device we are going to discuss. Uh, before that, let, let, me, let me discuss with you one, one application of a directional coupler. Last time we have seen one application. Today, let's see one more application. We call it uh, labeling circuits. So what does it mean by labeling circuits? Directional coupling. OK, so look here. We have uh, a signal source here, which generates uh, our signal for communication purpose, our transmitter. So uh, this power, the output of the source power, power uh, fluctuates transmitter power or from our signal source the signal power uh, there is fluctuation okay sorry power uh, fluctuation uh, the amount of power from this transmitter, uh, sometimes increases, sometimes decreases. Depends on what? Power value may depend on uh, temperature. Okay. It depends on vibration. There are many external and internal factors uh, which causes what? Which causes signal power fluctuation the signal power is not stable from our transmitter when it is temperature hot or cold air the amount of power we get from the transmitter fluctuates changes similarly when there is vibration it, the output power of our transmitter uh, depends on many environmental factors so we need a, a system uh, to stabilize this uh, power fluctuation. So look here, this is our directional coupler. So port number one connected to output. This, in this case here, uh, our power is, uh, is unregulated. It is unregulated. Uh, power output from the source. What does it mean by unregulated? Uh, 
uh, the output here uh, may increase or decrease fluctuation power here due to what? Due to temperature fluctuation, due to vibration, and uh, many factors. So here we connect the directional coupler. Directed is output from this source connected to directional coupler port one. Okay, uh, this is port two. So signal from output source transmitted directly from source one to source two, right? Sorry, from port one to port two, direct port. But there is, uh, in directional coupler, there is another port, we call it coupling port. So this coupler, signal from our transmitter is transmitting here. Okay, it's transmitting. Small sample go to uh, P1, sorry, go to P3 by coupling. As you know, coupler has uh, four ports. So this is port one, this is port two, uh, here we have port three. So small sample of the signal go to port three. Small sample, which is connected to a detector, which converted into uh, DC, and go to, as a feedback, to a port called automatic level control, okay? So here, automatic level control has a variable attenuator. So let's see due to temperature or vibration, if the input power increases from a transmitter, what will happen to P3? P3, the sample power also increases, right? You take small sample and feedback, feedback to the transmitter again. This signal is directly transmitted here, but small power, small sample, go back to the transmitter. So if the power increases, we don't need this power fluctuation, right? In computer systems, we need stable power from the transmitter. But uh, the power is not stable, uh, so we need we are here uh, using directional coupler to, to make the power stable or to regulate the power. So let me uh, say it again. Here, this power from the transmitter goes to port one of the coupler. Port two uh, directly connected here. This is port number six. So this go back to the uh, connected to what? ALC, automatic level control. This is output port. This is our transmitter. So signal is still transmitted, no, no interruption. Here is our output. What type of output? Leveled or Regulated, you can call it regulated or labeled. How about the output here? Unlabeled or unregulated. Unregulated uh, output. So this system convert unregulated to regulated, right? Uh, just like a voltage stabilizer. As you can see, the 220 volt, which comes from the main supply, fluctuates, sometimes increases, decreases. But if we have voltage regulator, voltage stabilizer, you'll get uh, only uh, constant voltage. Similarly, in our transmitters, uh, this unregulated power, a power fluctuates, increase, decrease, due to what? Due to temperature, or due to vibration and so on. So what will happen if this power increases? Let's say we need power always 10 watt. Fix it, not fluctuation. But the power here from transmitter, it can be 11. Why it increases? Because of maybe temperature or vibration, now the transmitter generates 11 watts. But here, always must be what? 10. So this sample is taken here from port 3. The, the coupler takes small sample. So now you can sense there is a power increase. This will go back to the LC, automatic level control. So the automatic level control adjusts what? 
it adjusts the attenuation. Now increase the attenuation. So this 11 power, 11 watt, automatically decrease to 10 watt. If the power here decrease to 9 watt, what will happen? This port 3 go back to here, so this will decrease attenuation. Uh, so the output automatically increases from 9 to 10. So you see this is a feedback, constant feedback. We take sample to check whether our power output is 10 or not. If it increases, we decrease it automatically. If it decreases, uh, uh, the LC here will increase it automatically. So in this way, the output of the coupler is always 10 watt, regulated. The transmitter output is here, it can be 11 watt, 12 watt, 8 watt, it fluctuates. But the output of the coupler is always fixed 10 watt, regulated output. Okay, So you can find directional coupler in many, many applications. Uh, like this monitoring circuit. What does it mean by monitoring circuit? Uh, When you see uh, here, uh, this signal is transmitted directly from port one to port two, but here we connect uh, our meters or spectrum analyzer, power meter, uh, different type of devices here. Signal is still transmitted from port one to port two by taking the small sample here, we can monitor. We can check their noise, their interference, how much frequency you can check, how, what is the power of signal. Constantly you can monitor because here we have small, always small sample. The, the transmission is not interrupted. Transmission is going on between port one and port two. Here is the output. But this coupler will give us small amount of sample. This cable we connected to the uh, our meters uh, so to check constantly you sit in the office and you can check the transmission okay uh, for diagnostic purpose So uh, let's see one more example before we go to power divider. Uh, our, uh, so it's uh, this is second second component we are going to see is power divider. So we'll come to that. But before that, let's see uh, example. So, uh, example, we have a directional coupler. Uh, directional coupler is given. Uh, we see coupling uh, 15 dB coupler is given and directivity uh, let's say 60 dB directivity so this coupler uh, sorry it has uh, Port one input port. Here you see this is the electrical symbol of coupler. Okay, so uh, no connection between transmission line one and transmission line two. Uh, it's coupling, no physical connection. So this is uh, P two power transmitted directly. This is P three coupled port sampled one. Uh, this one is isolated port P4. So if P1 is given, let's say 
one milliwatt power is given, sorry, 100 milliwatt, uh, P1, 100 milliwatt power, applied uh, to the input. So now you can determine how much power is sampled, P3, using what? Using C. So what is the formula for C? C is equal to tail log of uh, tail log of P1 input power divided by P3. So C is given, uh, 15 dB is given. Okay, so uh, 10 log, we have discussed this last time, uh, P1 divided by P3. P1 is given now 100 milliwatt. So you can calculate what? You can calculate P3. So C indicates how much power go to the coupled port. How about D? What is the formula for D? Directivity, which means power sampled and go in the wrong direction. Uh, the wrong direction because the coupler is called directional coupler. So uh, what will be D? Tail log of, uh, tail log of P3 divided by P4. So what's P3? We get it here, P3. How much power tra transmitted, uh, coupled or sampled in the correct direction divided by P4. So from this equation, if D is known, you can calculate what? Uh, you can calculate P. P4, uh, if your device is perfect, P4 must be zero. All the sample signal must be go to uh, fourth number three. Okay, so this is uh, a directional curve. Now, let's go to uh, our second device. Uh, very similar to uh, directional coupler, which is uh, which is called power divider, or you can in some uh, cases we call it hybrid. I will explain why these devices are called hybrid circuits. So as as the name indicates, this power divider, as you can see here, it has input port here. We apply a signal here, uh, so. Uh, it divides the signal into two equal parts. Directional coupler also divide the signal, right? Directional coupler divide the signal, but it is used to take small sample. The main transmission is here. Most of the power is transmitted directly, but we need to take small sample from the main cable. Uh, we put another cable very close to the main cable, so small sample will be diverted. But in this direct in power dividers, uh, the signal divided into two equal parts. So here you see uh, it is used. These devices are used for what purpose? Uh, to divide a microwave signal uh, from one transmission line. A transmission line comes here. Okay, this is so it's divided into one transmission line here, another output uh, here. So this is isolated port. We don't. We are not using it here. So basically, uh, so this is input. Uh, so the power is divided. What's what? These devices are called power dividers. Now let's discuss the three type of power dividers we use in microwave system. The first divider is called uh, is called three dB quadrature hybrid. I will explain why we call it hybrid. The electrical symbol. So here, uh, give the electrical symbol. So as you can see here, 90 degree hybrid, uh, or it's a power divider. It has one input here, and it has what? Two outputs. It divides the signal into two equal parts. So if you apply power P here as input, how much power up here? P divided by two. P divided by 
two. The signal divided into two equal parts. If you apply one watt, this will be how much? 0.5 watt signal go to this this uh, transmission line. Uh, 0.5 watt also goes to another trans. So signal is divided into two equal parts. Half means what in dB? If you convert half into dB, it is equal to uh, minus three dB. This you know this right? Ten log of half. Calculate ten log of half. It's dB. Convert this half into dB. How much we get? Three dB. That's why this coupler is called three dB coupler. So the first coupler were sorry. The first uh, power divider or hybrid we are discussing is called uh 90 degree hybrid okay so the first hybrid we discuss is you can call it 90 degree hybrid uh, hybrid or you can call it uh 3db quadrature 3db quadrature hybrid quadrature Okay, so as I said, what is the purpose of this device? Uh, as you can see here, uh, we have input here, signal is divided into two equal parts. One output we get here, another output. Because the power is divided into two equal parts, uh, this, this power divider, divide this signal into two equal parts, we call it what? We call it 3db. Why we call it 3db? 3 means half. So here, here you see this power p. Uh, look here. This power p divided into two equal parts. P divided by two. P divided by. Two. That's why this power divider is called 3db. Okay, 3db. You see here. Uh, you see here. This port is 3db. This is also 3db. What does it mean? 3db means. 3db means uh, in decibel, 3db means half. If you convert half into 3db, half db means uh, 10 log, right? So calculate 10 logarithm of half, you get 3. That's why it writes 3db. In microwave, as you know, uh, mostly we use uh, logarithm scale, like db, db, and so on. So this input power, because divided into two equal parts, p over two and p over two, this divider is called three dB divider. Another point, it says what? Quadrature. Quadrature means ninety degree. So this is not only dividing the part, signal into two equal parts; it 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 adds phase phase shift also. So look here, if you apply uh, a signal in this 3 dB quadrature here, uh, input power 10 watt. Okay. So here we have two outputs. So uh, this power is half of the input. So how much? 5 watt. Another signal we get here is also half. How much? Five watts. So this divide, this power divider is three dB. Okay, three dB. Sorry, uh, and it is quadrature. Quadrature means if you compare the phase angle of this one, one of the output has zero degree phase, another output ninety degree phase shift. So this device will do two things. It divides the power into two equal parts, plus one of the, look here, one of the uh, output is 90 degree phase shift, but this one is zero, zero degree phase shift, okay? So that's why it's called hybrid. It's, it's, it's combination of two things. Divide the power, one, one power, one output is 90 degree phase shift. Uh, if you see a sign here, then, uh, 
if it is sine pseudo like this. So this signal is divided into two. Uh, the power is divided into two. So if this is 10, this will be what? This will be five. Another signal, but this signal is uh, 90 degree phase shift. Okay. So, uh, as you can see here, uh, this is our input. We have two outputs. The power, as you can see here, this is this is 10, this will be 5, this will be 5. One of the output is zero phase shift, but this this output is 90 degree phase shift. Okay, so if this is cosine, this will be sine. The two outputs are not in phase, they are, don't have the same phase, they have different phase. They different by how much? 90 degree phase difference between the two outputs. That's why this this device is called 90 degree hybrid or quadrature. A quadrature means 90 degree. Okay. So uh, this is one of the most widely used power divider in microwave systems. What is the first power divider? 3 dB quadrature or 90 degree hybrid. Okay. The second type uh, of power divider uh, is 180 degree hybrid. Let me show you the symbol. Electrical symbol for all devices. I give it here. So when you see here, there is another hybrid circuit called 180 degree hybrid or power divider. Okay. Why we call it this power divider hybrid? It's not only dividing the power, it also incorporates phase shift. So the input power here, again in this case, divided into two equal parts. This 108 hybrid, 180 degrees written here, is also uh, divide the input into two equal parts. But what's the difference between 90 degree hybrid and 180 degree hybrid? Here, the phase shift is the difference between the two outputs, phase shift, is 180 degree phase shift, not 90 degree. Okay? The power is divided into two equal parts, plus, if you compare the phase angle of one of the output and another output, uh, there is a phase difference of 180 degree phase shift. Okay? Uh, this type of power divider or hybrid circuit is called 180D hybrid. Also very common in, uh, very common, commonly used in microwave systems, uh, these power dividers. Okay. So what is the second power divider we have discussed? Uh, 180 degree. And a hybrid you can see here you can see this device here so this is the input okay this is isolated port we are not using it in this case we are using this if your input is from this side so now input is from this side we apply input so here you see on the device what is here it says what zero degree how about this output it says 180 degree so this power is, you get how many outputs? Two outputs, because it's a power divider. Signal divider, it divides the signal into two parts. So here we get a uh, signal with power, half of the input. Here is another power, uh, half of the input. And another difference between the two outputs is phase shift. If this is zero degree, this one is how much? 180 degree phase shift, okay? Uh, 180 degree phase shift when you compare input and the two outputs, sorry. Okay, so same type of power divider is called 180 degree uh, hybrid. 
So, so far we have discussed how many type of power dividers? Two, 90 degree hybrid and 180 degree hybrid. Both these divide this input power into two equal outputs in terms of power. But in the 90 degree hybrid, uh, output one and output two, they have 90 degree phase difference. When you come to 180 degree hybrid, uh, output one and output two, uh, there is 180 degree phase difference. Uh, it's used in many applications, this hybrids. But another power divider, also there, uh, with electrical symbol, this one. This one, uh, electrical symbol, as you can see here, okay? Uh, it's called in-phase power divider, in-phase power divider, or Wilkinson power divider. So, third type of power divider we discussed uh, here is, uh, as you can see here, it's called what? Wilkinson power divider. What is the symbol? Ethical symbol. It has one input. How many outputs? Two outputs. So this input power is a power divider. Wilkinson is power divider. It's also power divider. Divide the input power. Uh, into two equal parts and the two outputs they have the same phase no phase difference they are in phase that's why this divisor is called in phase power divider or simply you can call it uh, zero degree uh, power uh, power divider or wilkinson power divider so in 90 degree hybrid, there is 90 degree phase difference between uh, the two outputs. In 180 hybrid, there is 180 degree phase shift, but in Wilkinson power divider, there is no phase change. The outputs have the same phase. That's why it's called in phase power divider. Uh, this divides the input into how many parts? Two parts. There is a power, Wilkinson power divider. Look here. So, this case, this is our input P. So, simply P, signal with input power P, is divided into how many parts? Four parts. So, power, the input power divided into four signals. Each one P divided by uh, four. So in this case, it's one by two Wilkinson by power divider. One by two, which means one input, two outputs. How about this Wilkinson power divider? One by four. The signal is divided into four equal parts. So let me show you here. Uh, Wilkinson power divider. Uh, in this case, this uh, uh, you can see here, it's a divider, power divider. So input is one, how many outputs? One here, another output here, another output here, another output. One signal divided into four parts. So if this is signal has a power P, this signal will be power P4, P divided by four, same P divided by four, uh, all the outputs. Is there any phase difference between these signals? No, they are all the same phase because this uh, power divider is uh, a Wilkinson, Wilkinson power divider or in-phase power divider. So uh, 
there are three type of power dividers in microwave systems 3 db quadrature or 90 degree hybrid first one second 180 degree hybrid third one in phase or wilkinson power divider so how about here this is this is what one by eight wilkinson power divider so the input power here the input power is divided into eight equal parts you see so there is one by two one by four one by eight power wilkinson power dividers all these parts are power divided by eight right if this is eight watt power so each one will be one watt one watt one watt so signal divided into eight equal parts with no phase difference we call it one by eight wilkinson power divider uh, in this case, uh, it is one by one by four. One output, one one input, four output Wilkinson power divider. Okay. Now signal divided into four equal parts with no phase difference. Okay. So how about uh, quadrature? Quadrature means uh, signal divided into two equal parts and if this is zero degree phase, this will be 90 degree phase. That's 90 degree hybrid uh, device or 3 dB quadrature power divider. 